Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly WW meal prep. I cannot wait to share my recipes with you for this week. We're going to make a waffle breakfast sandwich. Waffles on WW. We are going to make some mesquite chicken with some delicious corn pasta salad and we are going to be making a layered dessert. All of which is WW friendly, all of which is amazing. So if you wanna see what I have in store for you on this week's meal prep, all you have to do is keep watching. The first thing that I'm gonna do for meal prep is get my chicken marinating so that once we make breakfast, we can move on to lunch and our chicken will be nice and marinated. So I'm going to marinate my chicken in the grill mates garlic herb and wine and for this marinade you're of course going to need some chicken i went ahead and trimmed all of the excess fat off of my chicken breasts you're also going to need one tablespoon of either wine or balsamic vinegar i did decide to go ahead and use balsamic vinegar you need one quarter cup of water and one quarter cup of oil and I'm going to use the Trader Joe's organic olive oil. And then you're going to need a bag to put all of your stuff in. So I'm going to go ahead and get my every chicken marinade, everything into the bag. And I will show you what the chicken looks like. And we are going to toss it in the fridge to marinate. So here is what the marinade looks like once you've added your olive, your vinegar or wine, whatever you choose, your water and your marinade packet. And then from here, we're just going to go ahead toss in our pieces of chicken, coat them thoroughly, and pop this into the fridge. And here's our chicken, all in the bag, coated in the marinade, ready to go into the fridge. I do count one smart point for the marinade for the olive oil, and as you know, there's always quite a bit of extra marinade in the bag, so you're not using the entire quarter cup of oil amongst your chicken. So I am going to count one smart point for my chicken. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge so it is all marinated and ready to go for lunch prep. For breakfast this week, I'm going to be making the Mud Hustler Big Ass Waffle. That's what it's called, so that's what we're gonna make for breakfast. I'm actually going to make mine into a breakfast sandwich. So, waffle breakfast sandwiches. Yum, cannot wait. So here's what you're going to need to make the waffle breakfast sandwich. So first you're going to need some protein powder of your choice. I'm going to go ahead and use this Tone It Up Vanilla Protein. I really like the Tone It Up Protein Powder. It is low point and it is delicious. You're also going to need some sort of pancake or waffle mix. I'm gonna go ahead and use Birch Benders. This particular mix has 16 grams of protein and it makes amazing waffles. You also want some seltzer water to add to your waffle mix rather than regular water because it does kind of fluff your waffle up and make it a little bit more delicious. You're also going to need some cheese if you're gonna make a breakfast sandwich. And then for your waffle, you need an egg white. And then we're also going to need an egg to put into the middle of our breakfast sandwich. And then I always season my eggs with the Trader Joe's onion salt and some ground black pepper. And then of course, you need your handy dandy waffle iron. So let's get started on these waffle breakfast sandwiches. So to get started on our waffles, you're going to need one scoop of protein powder. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Tone It Up Vanilla. I really like the Tone It Up brand. The flavor is really good. It doesn't have that chalky protein taste flavor. I will link this in my Amazon store if I can find this on Amazon. Otherwise, you can buy the Tone It Up protein powder at Target. I also have two thirds of a cup of my seltzer water. And you wanna either do one third or two thirds depending on the size of your waffle iron. Mine is a larger waffle iron, so I did two thirds of a cup. I have one egg white. And lastly, I have one quarter cup of the Birch Benders pancake and waffle mix. We're gonna go ahead and add this to our bowl. Give this a nice mix. And then make sure you liberally spray your waffle iron so that your waffle does not stick to it. 
and we're gonna get this popped into our waffle iron and get our waffle made. So it should be so good. And then from there, we'll go ahead and fry up our eggs and we can make our breakfast sandwich. So this is what your waffle mix should look like. It's gonna be similar to if you use Christie's or one of those other breakfast mixes. Once your waffle iron is completely warmed up, you are going to liberally spray it with whatever spray you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use my avocado oil spray. We want to make sure our waffle does not stick. And then we are going to go ahead and add our waffle mix to our waffle iron. Yum. Get that nice and in there. Spread that out as evenly as you can as well. And then we are gonna go ahead and close our waffle iron and let that waffle cook completely. I will be back when our waffle is done. So our green light on our waffle maker just went off. Oh my goodness, guys. Look at this waffle. Yum. Look at how good that looks. So there is what your waffle looks like. It is huge. It literally fills this entire plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a few more waffles up. I need five total. We'll let these cool, and then we'll get ready to assemble our breakfast sandwiches. But these look so good. So our waffles are done. Look at this, you guys. Yum. One huge stack of waffles. So what I'm gonna do is let these cool. I'm gonna divide the four pieces separately so we can make up little breakfast sandwiches. So let's get started on our eggs while these are cooling. So for our eggs, I'm gonna go ahead and use my small little egg pan, crack one egg into it. I'm going to break the yolk so that they're over hard, only because I don't want yolk seeping out of my waffle. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the Trader Joe's onion salt. As you know, this is my very favorite thing to put onto eggs. And then I'm also just going to add just a little bit of ground black pepper as well. And then we'll let this cook through. I'm going to actually cut this egg in half and put one half of the egg and one half of a slice of cheese on each little section of my waffle sandwich. So I'm going to let this cook up and I'll show you how we're going to put together our waffle sandwiches. All right, so my eggs are done. I have my five slices of light cheese, my meal prep container, and my waffle sandwiches. So this should be super easy. You are going to take one quarter of your waffle. I did already go ahead and cut my eggs in half. So I'm going to put one half of an egg on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and break my slice of cheese in half as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my half of a slice of cheese on that quarter of my waffle. And then I'm going to top it with the other piece. And look at that, yummy yum. So everything is nice and cool so it should not melt. I'm gonna go ahead and put that here in my meal prep container. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other half of my waffle, put half of an egg, my other half a slice of cheese, and the other quarter of my waffle. And I'm gonna put that in my meal prep container. And then what I have to do when I want to eat my breakfast is all I have to do is warm up my waffles. And then I have bagged up some blueberries and I'm just going to set that in the other part of my meal prep container. And that is my breakfast meal prep. But look at these waffle breakfast sandwiches. How indulgent and delicious is that? So let me get the rest of my meal prep containers put together, the rest of my waffle sandwiches. I'll show you my completed breakfast and give you the smart points. So here are my completed breakfast meal preps. So you can see that I have one of the waffle breakfast sandwiches and a little bag of blueberries for each day, so five days of the week. Now, if you have the option to warm your sandwiches up in an air fryer, that is 
ideal because you'll be able to get that crispiness back into the waffle. I unfortunately do not have an air fryer at work, so I am actually just going to pop mine in the microwave. I still think that they're gonna be delicious. You can see here that I went ahead and took some sugar-free syrup, put it into a small container. I'm just going to take this for the entire week, leave it in the fridge at work, and I think when I go to eat my breakfast sandwich, I will just drizzle a little bit of the sugar-free syrup over it. Not enough to count for a point, but that gives you the whole ambiance of waffles with syrup, but you get your eggs and your cheese. So this entire breakfast for the waffle breakfast sandwich and the blueberries is only four smart points. Four, you guys. The waffle itself is only three, and then you just have to count one point for the slice of cheese that you put between the two pieces of your waffle sandwich. So this, my friends, is my four smart point breakfast. Along with my chicken for lunches this week, I am going to be making a summer sweet corn pasta salad. I don't know what it is, but I think with the weather getting nicer, the sun coming out, I've really been feeling some pasta salad. So I am going to show you what is in our sweet corn pasta salad. So first you're going to need some macaroni. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Fiber Gourmet Light Elbows. This particular pasta has half the points of regular pasta. So it's going to dramatically lower the points of our pasta salad. You can buy this on nutrition.com. You can also purchase this in my Amazon store, which is linked below. You're going to need some cooking spray of your choice, some non-fat Greek yogurt, light mayo, a medium-sized red onion, buttermilk dressing, pepper, seasoning salt, cherry tomatoes, corn, either fresh or frozen, and center cut bacon. So let's get started on our pasta salad. The first thing we need to do to get started on our pasta salad is cook our bacon. The recipe calls for eight slices of center cut bacon. I am actually going to pop 10 slices into my oven. The other two are going to be part of my lunch today. So first things first, get your bacon cooked. So while our bacon is getting ready to go into the oven, we're gonna slice our grape tomatoes in half and we're gonna go ahead and dice up our red onion and then we're ready to move on with our pasta. While our bacon's in the oven, we're gonna get our veggies ready to also go into the oven right after the bacon. So what I have here is my cut up red onion. I'm just going to sprinkle that on my sheet pan that I've lined with parchment paper. You can just put it directly onto your sheet pan. Just make sure that you spray it really well with some nonstick cooking spray. So I'm gonna try to divide these onions up the best that I can put them nice and even on my parchment. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my bag of frozen corn. The recipe actually calls for three cups. I don't think this is quite three cups, but I'm just gonna go with what came in the bag of the frozen corn. Go ahead and give your corn and your onions a nice mix and then try to get them as evenly spread out as possible on your sheet because we're going to roast these in the oven so we want them as thin of a layer as possible just so that all of the corn and onions have a chance to roast to that we are going to go ahead and add some seasoning salt you're going to go ahead and sprinkle that over the top this is gonna be so good. This is what's gonna give it that kind of roasted flavor in your pasta salad, which is delicious. And then we are also gonna go ahead and add some black pepper as well over the top. And then lastly, we're gonna give it a quick spray with some nonstick cooking spray. I love, love, love this Chosen Foods avocado oil. So I am just gonna give all of my veggies just a quick spray and then these will be ready to go into the oven at 425 until they are roasted as soon as we pull our bacon out. 
while everything is in the oven you want to go ahead and get some salted water coming to a boil so that we can go ahead and cook our elbow macaroni so i'm going to let that cook while everything else is in the oven make sure that you not only drain your pasta but you rinse it with cold water just to avoid it sticking together i just took our center cut bacon out of the oven look at how yummy this looks i'm going to let it cool for just a moment and then i'm going to transfer it over to a paper plate with some paper towels to soak up all of that extra grease I just pulled out the roasted corn and onions. I'm gonna let this cool for just a little bit and then we are ready to assemble our corn pasta salad. This smells and looks so good. Look at the brown on those onions and on that corn. Yummo. We are ready to assemble our pasta. I made sure that my pasta was almost all the way dry. It is After sampling our pasta salad, I did decide to go ahead and add some of this Dax Green Zest. This is a salt-free seasoning. Dax seasonings are all delicious. They are all natural ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this to my pasta salad. I feel like it just needs a little something and I don't want to overdo the salt. Just so you know, this seasoning contains spices, dehydrated onion, garlic, lemon peel, and then a little bit of anti-caking agent. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this. If you're interested in Dax, they did offer me a 10% discount code for you guys. So there is a link and a 10% code down in the description box below. And I just think that by adding just this little bit of seasoning, it's just going to give my pasta salad that extra push for flavor. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the refrigerator and let's get going on our chicken. I just put the marinated chicken onto the pan for the air fryer. Look at how delicious this looks. And I wanted to show you, there is that much marinade left. So that is why I only count one point 
or essentially four points for these four pieces of chicken. So I'm gonna pop these into my air fryer at 400 for about 20 minutes. Alrighty, my chicken is officially in my air fryer. We are gonna go ahead and get this going. 400. And I'm gonna do 20 minutes. And I'll check it midway through. Flip the light on. And there you go. Chicken is getting ready to air fry. Alrighty, the chicken is out of the air fryer. Yum, look at how delicious that looks. So I went ahead and divided them up into about five servings so that I can have some chicken each day with my lunch. Now we're ready to put together our meal prep containers. So I've got my chicken in my meal prep containers. Perfect amount of chicken for each day. Here is our pasta salad fresh out of the refrigerator. Doesn't that look delicious? So I think what I'm gonna do is start with a heaping half of a cup. I'm hoping to get 10 servings out of my bowl. And then that way I'll be able to calculate the points. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one heaping half of a cup in each of my meal prep containers. And then I will see kind of where I'm at with the pasta. But doesn't this look yummy? So here is my completed meal prep for lunch. So the pasta salad ended up 10 servings at three quarters of a cup per serving. So I have five here. Here's the additional four servings and then I set a serving aside for lunch today. So this is going to be my lunch. I'm going to have one serving of the marinated chicken. I am counting that as one smart point for the olive oil in the marinade. I have three quarters of a cup of the sweet corn pasta salad, which is three smart points. I baked up some red grapes. Finally, the fruit is in season. These grapes are sweet and crunchy and so good. So my entire lunch is a total of four smart points. Three for the pasta salad, one for the chicken, zero for the grapes. I think I am going to have some of those Crunch Master brownie thins for dessert, so I will show you those next. But doesn't this lunch look so good? So with lunch, I'm gonna have 23 of these Crunch Master protein brownie thins. These are in salted caramel. These are delicious. They taste like the crunchy brownie corners. Love them. You can have a serving of these, which is 32 thins for three points. I just cut them down to 23 and it makes it two points. So what I have here bagged up are 23 little brownie thins times five days a week for five little baggies of the brownie thins for two smart points. So that will make my lunch three for the pasta salad, one for the chicken, two for the brownies, five smart points. For a fun dessert this week, I'm going to be making a layered pudding dessert. This sounds so good. It is low smart points for a dessert. It sounds amazing. Perfect for a nice spring or summer day, depending on what part of the country you're in. So let me show you what is in our dessert. So first you are going to need some vanilla wafers. I'm gonna go ahead and use the mini wafer cookies only because whatever is left over my husband can have in his lunch and these mini ones are just so fun. You're also going to need some strawberry jello, some sugar-free, fat-free vanilla pudding, some whipped topping. I'm going to go ahead and use light and two ripe bananas. So let's get started on our layered pudding dessert. So the first thing that we're going to do for our dessert is grab your 8x8 pan, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. What I did is I took a total of 40 of the mini vanilla wafers. I crushed those up. I put half into the bottom of my pan and then we went ahead and reserved the other half for the next layer of the dessert. So you're just going to take your pan, set it aside. Next, we're going to mix together our pudding ingredients. So in here, I have my one box of sugar-free vanilla pudding. To that, I'm going to be adding two cups of almond milk. You can also use fat-free milk or whatever milk you want to use. You just have to adjust your points accordingly. And then we are going to take a whisk and whisk together our pudding just as if you would 
if you were just going to pop this into the refrigerator to make a nice batch of pudding. So I'm going to get this all whisked together and then we are going to pour this over the top of our crust into our 8x8 pan. This looks so yummy. Once you have your pudding nice and combined, we are just going to pour that directly over the top of our cookies and that is the second layer of our dessert. And then next we are going to take one of our bananas, we are going to slice it and lay the slices over the top of the pudding. Once you've got your pudding on, go ahead and dice up your banana and then we are just going to plop our banana pieces here on top of our pudding as evenly as you can. You just wanna make sure that every bite of your dessert, you get some glorious banana. And then we are going to pop this in the refrigerator for about an hour, just to give it time to set. About a half an hour into that, we wanna go ahead and prepare our gelatin. So we will do that, and then that will be our next layer of our dessert. So this is really quick to put together, but the total chill time on this is about three hours. So if you're planning on having this for a dinner dessert, make sure that you plan accordingly so that you can make sure that you have enough time for it to completely chill. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up and pop this into the oven or not oven the refrigerator our dessert's been in the fridge about a half an hour so what I have here is one cup of boiling water that I actually just popped out of my microwave to that I'm gonna go ahead and add in the strawberry gelatin the sugar-free strawberry gelatin and we're gonna give this a big stir until it is fully combined and then we are going to put one cup of cold water into here wrap it in some saran wrap and I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in the fridge we want this to be almost all the way set before we add it to our pudding and cookie mixture that is currently cooking and refrigerating in the refrigerator. Okay, that made no sense, but you know what I'm talking about. This is real life, guys. Sometimes I can't always say what I wanna say, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my one cup of cold water and get this into the fridge. So this has been in the refrigerator for about a half an hour. I'm gonna go ahead now and add the other half of my cookies, and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of sprinkle those over the top of the pudding and the banana mix. And then I'm gonna put this back into the refrigerator for the remaining half of an hour while my gelatin is also starting to harden. And then we'll move on to the next step of our dessert. But this looks so delicious. This reminds me of really fattening, sugary banana pudding. Just saying. So okay, I'm gonna pop this back in the refrigerator and I'll be back in a half an hour or half a second for you. Once your jello is still liquid but is beginning to harden, we are going to go ahead and pour it directly over our pudding. Mmm, yum. And then to that, we are going to add another diced banana. So I went ahead and just sliced up the other remaining banana, and we're just going to pop those pieces onto our jello. And then we are going to pop this back into the refrigerator for another half of an hour to one hour or until the jello hardens the rest of the way. And then we will add our whipped topping on top of the fully hardened jello. And that will be our dessert. Once your jello is nice and firm, go ahead and pop it out of the fridge. You're going to want to get one cup of your light cool whip. We are going to spread this over the top of our jello and then our layer dessert is complete. We're going to go ahead and pop this back into our fridge until we're ready to eat it. But this looks delicious. I'm actually going to have this for dessert. So I will show you the serving size and give you the smart points. But yummy that it has pudding and bananas and jello. And then of course, vanilla wafers for that nice little bit of crust and crunch at the bottom. But this looks so delicious. So I'm going to get this popped back into the fridge until we're ready to eat our dessert. And then I'll slice it up and I'll show you the si size as well as the smart points, give you a couple of variations that you can do to get the right amount of smart points for your dessert. But look at that, you guys, yummy. 
And here is the layered pudding dessert. So down there you can see the vanilla pudding, the layer of the gelatin, the bananas, the whipped cream topping, and then I went ahead and topped it with just a little bit of the sugar-free Hershey sauce. So this entire dessert is four smart points. You can put it in the fridge or the freezer, but this looks delicious. Here's my plan for snacks for the week. So first I'm gonna be taking some of my Fiber Gourmet Thinables. These are my favorite flavor. I have not tried the jalapeno yet, and I heard that they are really good, but this is the Italian four cheese. 70 calories for 30 crackers. So on the back here, 30 crackers, 70 calories. Two smart points for 30 crackers. These literally taste like Cheez-Its. They're actually better than Cheez-Its. So I'm gonna be bringing those for a snack. I do have these linked down in my Amazon store in the description box. I decided to pick up a pack of the 100 calorie dry roasted almonds. I've been needing a little bit more protein in my snack, so these almonds are three smart points per package. I love that these are individually packaged. I'll show you. That way you don't overeat. So that's the size of the package. Three smart points, great little snack. So I'm going to be bringing those. I'm also going to be bringing some of my Julian Bakery Pro Granola. I'm obsessed with this granola. I love it. It's so good. It has amazing nutritional facts. 12 grams of protein, three grams of carbs, 14 grams of fiber. You can have an entire half of a cup of this gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, no artificial colors or flavorings. So if you're concerned of those things, you can have a half of a cup for two smart points. But my favorite thing to do is to take the pro granola and top just about a tablespoon on top of the tiramisu non-fat Greek yogurt for zero points. And that is a fabulous snack keeps you full with all the fiber and protein in the granola and the yogurt. If you're interested in Pro Granola, I do have a discount code. I will put that here on the screen. 10% off free shipping direct from the company. You can order as many flavors as you'd like, as often as you'd like using my discount code. There is espresso, vanilla blueberry, vanilla cinnamon, vanilla, peanut butter, and they just came out with chocolate. So definitely order yourself some Julian Bakery Pro Granola. You will not be disappointed. And then of course, as my morning snack, I'm going to have my Built Bar. You guys, this banana chocolate cream is seriously the best flavor of the Built Bar. You only have a few more days to take advantage of being able to get this flavor. It is limited edition, so it is going away midweek. So make sure you hop on BuiltBar.com. Use my discount code here on the screen to order yourself some of the banana chocolate cream Built Bars or any flavor with 10% off and free shipping. This is a three smart point candy bar that has 15 grams of protein. It literally tastes like a chocolate covered banana. Delicious. So those are the other two of my snacks Joining for the week. on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the recipes that I shared with you today. I cannot wait for breakfast and lunch and that dessert. That dessert is so good. I actually had a little piece and it was delicious for the smart points. Everything looks great. I cannot wait to share it with you throughout this next week in my what I eat and also just on my Instagram and in my Facebook group. If you are not part of my Facebook group, make sure that you check it out. I will put that right here on the screen and it is also linked down in the description box below. Right now we are in the midst of an honest tracking five plus day mission using the hashtag honest tracking with Jen. So make sure you join my Facebook group to not only be part of the honest tracking, but also I have uploaded all of my recipes for all of my videos on my Facebook group. So make sure that you join. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe. I do a meal prep every single week. So you always have an array of recipes that you can use to stay on track on WW. I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this week's meal prep. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.